Hi. So many teacher friends have been asking me to tell them how I use my, how I introduce my beatbox to my class. My name is Della Larson, and if you know me, you know that I love using beatbox in my class. And when I start with my kindergartners, I walk in and I just kind of hold it up. And most of my kids immediately know it's some type of toy, but they're not exactly sure. And you know when you sit down with a group of kids that sometimes not everybody is paying attention. All I have to do is that. Suddenly, everyone in the group is paying attention, sitting up, not sure what's about to happen, but they definitely want to know what's coming. So the first thing I always say is, what do you notice? And most of the kids are going to say, it looks like a bee. Yes. It definitely looks like a bee. And they'll talk about the eyes, they'll talk about the black stripes, and if no one mentions the buttons, kind of turn it around and say, what else do you notice? And then somebody's going to say that they notice that there are arrow keys. And I say, yes. So this is a bee bot, and it's called a bee bot because it's part bee and part robot. And the kids get that pretty quickly. I want them to start to investigate the buttons. Because what kid have you ever met that doesn't want to press buttons? So the first thing I ask them to I ask them is, what do you think is going to happen? Excuse me. What do you think is going to happen if we press this button? And everyone in the class is going to say, we think it's going to go straight. And I say, let's try it. So I always just ask somebody to come up and press the button. Nothing happened. They suddenly are very disappointed. And I kind of say, that's a head scratcher. Nothing happened. I wonder why. And eventually someone in your class is going to notice that there's a go button. So I say, let's try it again. Come on up, press the go button. And what happens? It goes straight. This is where I introduce the clear button. The clear button is the most important button that the kids learn because if they don't clear it, the program is going to stay the same. Now this is when I tell the kids, my little robot here does not speak English. He does not speak Spanish, he does not speak Creole, or whatever language you might have in your class. He speaks in code, and the code is made up of arrows. He will do whatever we ask him to do as long as we speak in a language that he understands. So, let's talk to him and ask him to do some things. So generally, I just bring a cup. And I put the cup, I'm going to move it here so you can see. I put the cup here and I say, I want this bee bot to go to the cup. And I always make sure I move it a little further than what I think it's going to go. And I have somebody come up and let's press the button and press go. Didn't quite make it. So this is an important part of computer science, which is what you all are. You're computer scientists. We have to debug. And when we debug, we look at what didn't work and we change it. So we told it to go one and it came to here, but we want it to touch the cup. So how many should we press it? Most of the kids will say, Two. You're going to get some kids who say 37. Let's try two. And again, pull somebody up. Two and go. And now let's see what happens. He made it to the cup and the kids will cheer and be so very happy. But next what I want them to do is I want them to turn. I want them to understand the turn button. So I put the cup over here at about a 90 degree angle and I say let's get it to turn. How do you suppose we're going to get it to turn? And most of the kids will say go straight and this is when I start to bring in my algorithm. The, and I tell them the algorithm are the steps we need to take to complete a task. So we're going to tell it to go straight and then we're going to tell it to turn and my, uh, you're looking at this and we're both looking at it so it's kind of messed up but I'm going to want him to turn and then we always need to remember to go 
and it's just like building a sentence. Now, one of the things that I do with my kids is I tell them, just like when you start a sentence, you start with a capital letter, you start with clear. So no matter what we're doing, we always start with clear because you know what's going to happen if they don't clear it. Then the program that they just put in will mat mix up with the one they're putting in, and it's a big mess. So I always kind of tell them this is like the capital letter. Clear it. We're going to tell it to go straight, and they're going to tell me to tell it to turn, and we're going to go. And I have somebody come up, and I have them literally press the buttons. So the first button is clear, and then I say turn it over. The next button is straight, and turn it over. And the next button is turn, and then turn it over. We put it back down before we hit go. Now, if you've used B-Bots, you know the B-Bot is not gonna make it to the cup. But my kids don't know that yet. So I want them to learn to debug. So I have somebody come up, press go. It goes straight. It didn't make it. Pretty soon they realize that we have to add to our program. So let's go back. We're going to start with clear. We're going to go straight. We're going to turn. But the piece that we forgot was the go straight again. And that is how we debug. We take our algorithm, all the steps we need to use to get to our task, which is get the B-Bot to the cup and we test it out and if it doesn't work we go back and we figure out where it went, went sideways and we add a new step. Now again same thing we start the, our sentence with clear, go straight, turn, go straight and go and let's see if we can get to the cup. Ta-da! It did. That is how I start my very first lesson. Because what I want them to learn in that very first lesson is that they use these buttons to tell the B-Bot what to do, and that you have to use the clear button, and that the B-Bot isn't going to work if you just tell it, tell it to turn. It's got to turn and go straight. These are critical things that I want them to know so that is how I introduced my B-Bot the very first time. And if you would like some of my programming cards, I'm happy to share them with you. Just click the link and it will bring you to um, a place where you can get these. I'm happy to share them. So I hope that your kids enjoy using the B-Bot as much as mine. And I'll be showing you more and more ways to use the B-Bot in your classroom. Bye!